Good morning, guys. 8-Bit uh, Vinyl here. Uh, my name is Dwayne. i um, finally uh, able to try to post a video this morning. It's about 6.30 on Monday morning. And um, I know everybody's but kind of been uh, lagged in shipping delays from Arcade 1-Up and various other manufacturers of these um, home arcade games, um, as well as, uh, you know, basically pre-orders and what have you, uh, shipping delays. Everybody's on a kind of uh, hold, a hurry up and wait uh, schedule. So I just wanted to um, put this video out there. It's my very, very, very first video. It's on my phone. So if the video gets a little moving around, dizzy, I apologize now. Uh, please don't judge. But I wanted to do something at this time uh, on some of the concepts and the, and the mods that I have done. In the past, so I'm going to do a bunch of videos on all different mods of all these cabinets, uh, Arcade 1-Up, that I've done. Um, because nothing's really posted on the KI cabs and the newer cabs yet. And once that stuff uh, comes out, I'm sure that the YouTubers and the subscribers uh, are just going to blow up the channel. And everybody's going to be going to those videos uh, for those reviews. And uh, this will kind of be a wash. So anyways... Um, Wanted to talk about this cabinet right here that I had modded. Um, it's a four player gauntlet cab. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this cab and the reason I was kind of on a mission to get this done is um, I feel like uh, we've re, Arcade One Up has redone all the, uh, all the Gen 1, Gen 2 cabs uh, for a second, third, fourth, Pac Man 25th time. <laughs> um, and, and Gauntlet and the Rampage game, they haven't touched since Gen 1. And of course, all of us who had these cabs like did not like the control setup, didn't like that. Um, and my biggest pet peeve is I loved Gauntlet. I, I know that I, uh, I, I'm older than I look, and I grew up in the 80s in a lot of arcades, and Gauntlet was the first four-player cab that I ever recall when I was a kid. And... Um, thought that was the coolest game ever and I'm kind of surprised that with the title rights and everything that they have to this game they haven't corrected it making making uh just updating it to a four player cab or nothing for nothing uh the three player cab that was Rampage um you can't actually play three players at once on for Gauntlet you can only play two um at a time and I want to play four at a time uh anyways just in case I forget to mention that, if anybody's got the concept to not do a pie, not do a uh, Pandora box or anything like that, I've done a billion of those. I got tons of, I got eight cabs that got all that crap in it. Don't need any uh, info on that. But if you know how to take the stock controls and literally mod the game to just a four player gauntlet to just kind of keep it committed to gauntlet, maybe gauntlet two, that's it. Um, maybe gauntlet legends, of course, I think that's an N64 console game or something. Anyway, anyway. Um, anyways, if you got any ideas on that, I am all ears on how to do that. I've played with this thing literally for six months on my time off. And uh, so let's get to it. And I'll go head to toe um, on all the different mods and all the different things that I had done. Um, so here we go. All right, guys, here it is again. Um, sorry if the phone is shaky or anything like that. First video, like I said. This is the actual control panel, and this is what it looks like in my gauntlet cap. So it does it does go like this. If you look at it from a sky view, it does taper down, um, and it, it tapers in the sides this way. Um, and then, of course, a, a kind of a hexagonal in the back and then into the cabinet. So uh, a couple things I wanted to note on this was that this particular uh, piece is actually separate. I think it was gonna be too much of a nightmare to try to explain this to Tyler that this obviously is one big flat piece. This is the decal. The decal diff literally stops right here. This part is part of the um, um, Tyler at RK Graphics. His kick plate is uh, an Atari one, which I didn't really want for this cabinet but the blue matches the blue of all the other cabinets exactly so i basically just took a piece of that decal off the atari kick plate 
made a piece of wood and basically joined the two of these together and fit this inside and then uh, drilled and mounted my buttons into here. Um, as far as these, these are all hat buttons. Uh, top end, this is, uh, these are, um, these are not Suzo hat. These are Sanwa with um, four pound springs in. So um, does does play very well, pretty, pretty darn tight. Um, on that, the way that I, uh, made the cabinet or the game set up on it was it is the original rampage. Um, so it is going to be one, two and three player. It, this literally the guts of this is the rampage control deck. I've done nothing else to it. Um, it's going to play just like when you buy the rampage cabinet, I didn't do anything to it. The only thing I did do a, to it, uh, is make. Um, the one and two player front and center versus um, one and two player here because if I'm playing it by myself, I'd always be over here. As you can see, like where my hand is, I got plenty of space. Um, oops, sorry, my hand. Uh, plenty of space here to play. Four players definitely fits on it, just for the record. I'm five foot four, I'm 170 pounds, and um, yeah, like I have no ish uh, playing this thing. So moving on to the other parts of the control panel, I was able to find, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but this is actually blue um, T-molding that was a half inch that I got from Game Room Guys on eBay um, for about 20, 25 bucks. Um, and I loved it. So I basically took a, um, a 1 16th uh, router bit uh, big old disc looking thing. There's other videos that people have done this with their risers, T moldings, stuff like that. I'll feel free to look those up, but that's what I did. I literally set this up in the middle and after I got the graphics, stuck it on, um, traced out exactly where I wanted the board. Um, then I basically, uh, cut the board to the graphic. And then I knew exactly where to, to drill my holes for my buttons because of the decal had the layout, all of that stuff. That's how I did it. T-molding, um, basically I just routed around and I got this T-molding and trimmed it in place all the way around to the back. So um, next big thing, bitch of a thing, definitely took me the longest was the tray. Obviously I didn't have any access to making a plastic tray and I was not in the mood and I'm going to take this apart because I'm going to really show you like exactly what I did. But believe it or not, this is actually um, white PVC exterior trim. Uh, contracting is my background and that's what I did. So this is literally um, uh, three eighths ish, five sixteenths, three eighths, three eighths uh, white PVC trim. And this is just quarter inch plywood. And I basically took a bunch of shapes and had to cut with my um, miter saw a bunch of these pieces, put them together, um, so it would literally follow the the X, this control panel it would follow it, and then and make it deep enough so if you had a hap or you had a sand wall, it would not bottom out. So that was a a really big deal um, to make that. Not only was the tray difficult, once you get past all that, you actually have to, and I'm gonna show you, you have to actually cut some jigs in the cabinet because as the controllers come across, it actually, if you look at the concept, this button would actually be out here in the breeze and you would see it and it, and it would never be able to cross the, um, the side panel, um, the side panel wood. So I had to cut it, not obviously cut it too far. So this this actually is not sitting on here. It's actually down over it by about a good inch or so. And I'll get into that a little bit later uh, after that. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So moving on down, I put more T-molding on this. This is definitely, I made a uh, custom riser. Um, I make all my cabinets at, uh, 16 to 16 and a half inch risers. I'm a firm believer of that I am five foot four. I got a lot of friends, a lot of friends that, uh, you know, are way taller than I am. And I always thought that the one foot riser was the wrong concept. I know they try to stay, stay on shipping the boxes, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit what anybody tells me like adding 
literally two to three inches on a riser and putting it in the same box, you're not going to tell me this is going to all of a sudden weigh a miraculous amount and make this big difference. Or they need a whole new box to fit it in. I just don't buy it. I, do, I don't. Like, I don't know why they, at first when they came with Gen 1, I got it. Like, they made the, these toys, they made them for little kids, and then they put a riser on it in case adults want to play it. But now the cabinets are getting, you know, the days of $75 modded cabinets and, and, and $100, $200, they're just going by the wayside. And a lot of these people are all at three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a cab and up. A lot of people are not buying these for these kids at this point for that price range. They're just not. Um, <laughs> it's great that they have kids that play it, but they're, the purpose of them buying it isn't for their kids. It's for us, right? We're adults. We're into retro, uh, and this is our genre of gaming. I mean, it's just what it is. So this is a 16-and-a-half-inch riser, again, with the custom graphics. Um, and I think that's about all I can say on this. If anybody's just curious, since I'm on the front of it for Defender and kind of those other games um, that are – uh, that were part of this Rampage cabinet. Um, they are on here. I'm seeing it. Well, I can't seem to get back to it. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, so they they are on here if you want to play some Defender. Um, just the fire. Put the player one. Um, and we can play some Defender. I'm not good at it, but basically this is your trigger. You're going to kind of hold it. It's going to be that weird concept because there's no way I'm savvy enough to mod it that well. I'm great with the carpentry. Obviously, that's my forte. Um, I can lay out some buttons. I can change some um, some uh, LCD boards um, and the VGA, HDMI um, converter board, stuff like that. I can do that, obviously, but I can't... Uh, um so I just wanted to concept how cr how loud this cranks, um, and now we'll talk about the uh, the stereo system. Okay, now that I got the control panel off, I'm going to kind of show you what I did here. So we all talked about Suzo hat buttons, um, uh, Sanwa sticks, and these I actually got from China, labeling players one through four because it's the only place that I could actually get it. Um, with the three and four player and black buttons, which I was very, the original gauntlet had all black buttons. Um, and these are actually from a Street Fighter cab, which are kind of hard, getting hard to get to get the, the volume controls in black. Um, so flipping it over, this is the bottom of the deck. Okay, so I just made this out a quarter inch, obviously after all the sidewalls and everything was was made, then the quarter inch backing got placed. Um, so looking at this, there's a reason this board is kind of, this is made a little screwy and it's in order to get the height of the deck just right um, and not too, too recessed down inside the cabinet without hitting the tops of the buttons, um, you needed a little spacer in the center. It was a lot of trial and error, kind of putting it on there before there was buttons and finding out the exact depth you needed everywhere when you set it down and it stayed flat. Um, these here obviously were mounted up, um, d just a bunch of blocks, just giving you enough quarter inch lip here um, so the, the quarter inch plywood would sit down on top and actually be flushed with the, with the bottom and so you wouldn't see the rough edge of the plywood uh, this way. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the screw holes. Obviously you can see one here, but the next one, the screw holes that mount it to the, the actual side panels of the arcade one up. Here's this one of these screw holes here. Another one would have been literally where this button is. And you can see it's not there because it's in the way. So nothing could be done about that. Moving over this way, um, here's the other fourth screw hole down through the deck. You can see how close it is to the joystick. And then, uh, uh, and here's the other one that's near the top. So these are even these are even on blocks up here in the front, uh, kind of a weird triangular three quarter inch block, just again for that spacing. Um, so you got this this block here with I'm sorry half inch. This is half inch, and this is half inch. So when it sits down, it sits recessed, but you're not going down like two inches down on the side panel 
start to lose some of the side panel look the more this gets recessed. So you're like splitting that difference. No, that's probably a hard thing to kind of think about what I'm saying, but um, it's, a, it's a lot of trial and error. This is the other board that I was saying that you literally had to cut like a five or a 10 degree angle, I can't remember, because this goes flush against your monitor. Um, and then this, this is one piece, this is a second piece. This was the Atari blue graphic that I had extra and I just wrapped it around and cut it. Um, and then I just basically glued and secured it here with these, um, with just these strappings uh, to make it one piece. And then I grooved this out with a router very carefully, very time consuming and put this back on. So this coax cable, this right here is spliced into the actual volume control on the arcade one up. So this does work, this volume control. And this goes into the back of the little cheesy amp there in the back of the cabinet. And then from that amp, um, the eighth inch um, cable goes from the amp up to the little volume control that you actually are gonna use to turn up or down the volume on the cabinet. So hope that part makes more sense because I felt a little like I was stumbling through that. As far as the board, this is definitely the Rampage uh, original board. Uh, with some just extensions because everything gets so spread out, the wires start not to fit. And then this isn't connected, but this is obviously where uh, Elf would play on Gauntlet, uh, player four. So back at the cabinet, when you take the control panel off, I wanted to just know, note this, like this, these actually had to be notched out for the buttons because the buttons are literally in the center of this and even part of the uh, some of the joysticks when you start to wrap around the cabinet this way. Um, so you had to actually cut the cabinet this way. But like I said, if you start coming down, now what's keeping it from the button hitting this bottom is that three-quarter inch piece and that three-quarter inch spacer keeps that up, or half inch, not three-quarter, half inch spacers, it keeps that button up just enough to give you that clearance so you're not hitting, bottoming out the button on this. And you can see the other side is completely a different layout with a little just a spigot here because this is a button this is a huge joystick for player one and then this mount right here this little l bracket there is no fourth screw so obviously you can mount it here but this is a sanwa button is actually right here so i actually did this little l bracket and you will actually screw from underneath the cabinet inside and screw up through to secure this fourth one and last but not least on the decal um, when you put this on, it was very hard concept to try to figure out plus or minus where this would lay and you, your control deck wouldn't cover this or this. You can see this is about like an inch down from center. It actually isn't even center. It's about an inch down because if you put the control panel on and this was center, you'd actually start covering up this graphic and it would just look bad. Um, and you actually wouldn't see it because the tray is hanging so low. So this was a split the difference kind of thing. I went a little bit lower. And so basically by the time it covers it, it's about here and it measures equal with this. And that's kind of how I, I did it. So I'll get the control panel all back together, get it put it back on and uh, continue the video and another uh, on other topics. Okay, so the next thing I'm talking about on this uh, is the stereo system. I'm gonna play Valkyrie. Well, I wanted Faker, one hundred points. Oh. This isn't even max volume. This is probably half. <laughs> um, not that I'm trying to crank it to doomsday and drive everybody crazy in the household. They need to open doors. But I thought everything was, uh, these games should have that punchy stereo system. So let's talk about the stereo system. Okay, so here, going into the cabinet, the first thing I do um, is I'll show you this. This is my control panel. This is my, this is my power button in one switch right here. It's an electrical outlet. I know a lot about electricity, so I just liked one switch. Everything turns on, stereo, everything, you name it. My volume control is actually this little thing right here. Retro Ralph did a little tidbit on it probably a year plus ago on uh, this little tiny quarter inch um, volume control knob. They, they go for about uh, 20 bucks 
on uh, Amazon. Um, I think they're the most amazing thing ever. And as far as cutting all this out for the electrical thing, uh, when you take this off, I just trace the box. Make sure that your um, light up marquee, this is far enough back. So when you put the actual box in and the depth of the box goes down, you actually don't interfere with the uh, light up marquee coming in. Hugely important before you cut this panel because you can buy these panels separate from aftermarket people on like eBay and stuff, but they charge you quite a bit when you start adding up the parts. So um, that's kind of a one-time thing. You don't really want to mess it up. Um, same with this. This is on by double-sided tape to the side of the cabinet. And um, this is just kind of sitting up there. Now moving in, what I have for stereo systems in every one of my cabinets is a Klipsch 2.1 computer stereo system. These things are around, around I want to say like 2012, 13-ish. Um, the reason I discovered this system is uh, my name, 8-Bit Vinyl, I'm huge into vinyl. Um, and this system was connected to my record player. Um, and I loved it. It was, it was a good sound. It was cheap to buy. I think the whole system back then, and that's when it just came out brand new, was like 150 kind of went away after a few years, thought they basically disc discontinued it. Um, and just this last year, it's starting to, uh, obviously by popular demand, it came back in stock. You can buy, there's a ton of these at my local Walmart up here in New Hampshire, and they go for about 90 bucks, and believe me, worth every penny. It's got a, this is a six inch sub. Six inch is all you need, man, it cranks. You don't need people putting big subs in there or nothing. It fits in the cabinet beautifully. Still plenty of room to put your, uh, whatever it is. You put a car cable board in there, you put your power outlet, your power strip, all that stuff. Simple concept, this is just the basic, uh, the basic, uh, what do you call it, VGA or uh, LCD board for the Gauntlet uh, Rampage cab. Um, this amp, everybody's very familiar with the amp. Um, so basically when you buy this stereo system out the back, it actually comes with, whoops, where is it? That cable right there. This cable, I just have it wrapped around nicely. It comes on down. Um, and it goes into the back of the amp and then from the amp it plugs into There it is. Yeah, sorry. It's hard to sneak the phone back in here Plugs into the back of the amp the quarter in one quarter inch You can see the black one inside comes down plugs right there into my back of my amp these um, coax cables go from this to a single channel which therefore that is the other plug right there and that's it i mean it's as simple as that you don't need the volume control at all on this uh on this amp so turning that on uh it's basically this switch bypasses this amp so you can turn the volume up and down from outside the cab without going behind it getting inside it every time you turn around it's a pain in the ass um but you do need the amp in order to go from the stereo system to the switch um if you're using stock stuff. Um, if you're not using stock stuff, you don't need the amp at all. You just need the little um, volume control piece up there in this stereo, and that's it. Um, so what I have right now is the phone actually inverted inside the cabinet, so you can see the front of the speaker. Um, and basically on this side, uh, uh, your left is a bass subwoofer control to up the bass lower the bass too much bass and this one's your separate volume so what you'll do is you basically play around get these settings exactly where you want them and then you don't have to touch it you basically will go up to that small uh, volume control on the top of your cab and that's going to set the actual volume of the cabinet um and it's as long it's it's pretty good it's pretty equal it's pretty even but if you want more bass you have the option if you want less bass all of it um this sub is cranks um definitely recommend this for like tmnt or any of that um another last thing i'd like to mention about the stereo system is back when these first came out a couple of years ago everybody was all about you know having the speaker in the stock location changing it over to you know four inch and i've even got the most aggressive four inch rockford fosgate 
punch you could name and it just sounded tinny um, no matter what I did even using that amp you saw back there and stuff it just didn't give it that that punch and of course people are like what are you gonna put a sub in it you know blah 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 um, which I thought was overkill so another huge reason I thought this system was great is it gives you that sub feel without this ginormous undertaking of putting a system in this thing and it's actually fairly for 90 bucks it's amazing as far as the concept of oh well the speaker needs to be mounted up here or under here or this and it's got a butt blast at you totally fake news with this system i'm telling you man um you don't need this thing coming out this thing cranks i mean it cranks you don't know where the sound's coming from you don't even care all you know is it blasts your brains right out of here it, i have to actually turn it down more than i have to turn it up um I'm so impressed with it. If you think that it rattles the vibration of the uh, MDF board or any of the stuff that doesn't happen, never has happened. I have 10 cabinets I've done it to. I haven't sealed it or boxed, nothing like that. It doesn't rattle. It, it's nice and tight. It's punchy. It's great, um, especially on my TMNT. It, it blasts. Um, but I have them on all my cabs. I literally, I don't care. I just, when I buy a new cab, I buy that. <laughs> it's just part of the deal. And I custom make my riser. And I buy this from Arcade Game Factory. Those are like my go-to. Every time I get a cab, that's what I'm doing. They're getting business from me. And probably Tyler's getting business. Um, love the subcontracting on this. Uh, last thing I'll talk about on the back is uh, my door, right? I'm also a firm believer done this to every single door. Just get these little hinges here at Home Depot. Take these out with the, uh, I, I actually take the door off, kind of split the difference with my measuring. Well, I don't know what it is, five inches, give or take, five inches, give or take, and whatever's in the middle. And then I just router this out and I put a door on it with a uh, one of these little um, uh, catches for basically any kitchen cabinet with the spring-loaded um, thing there. And just to keep it, so the panel doesn't warp or twist, I put a magnet down there in the bottom. Now, with all this stuff, is it too heavy to move? No, absolutely not. It does, it actually, it's a little heavier, but can I pick it up? Yes. Um, can I, I put these furniture pads on the bottom of it and slide it around my entire first floor? Yeah, no problem. Um, this cabinet here is, believe it or not, I just take some two by fours, I split them in half the long way. Um, and I just actually box the front side in this and sandwich it right against the side of the cab. Screw a couple of screws right in down low, right into the speaker. What are you going to use it for anyway? Why do you really need to ever take it out? You're not going to take it out. I mean, you're, you know, you're not. Not unless you're trying to move this, put it in the cabinet for a year, take it out, put it somewhere else for a year. Who's doing that shit, man? You're already, you're already into this. You're already modifying it. You're getting committed to it. It's a hobby. You're spending a boatload on it. You're going to keep it in there. It's going to be a cool concept, and that's going to be that. So I, I just literally just do it really discreetly. I kind of just put a couple of drywall screws in the side and a couple of drywall screws um, through the 2x4 and down into the MDF. Um, and that's that. And if you want to move it around, yes, you can still just take it off the riser, just like any old arcade one-up cabinet. This is also, everything is completely secured. So let's just say, heaven forbid, you want to go over to a buddy's house on Super Bowl weekend and bring this cabinet with you so you can all can play it. That's why I wanted to screw it all down because I could literally lay it on the side and take the control panel off, lay it down on its side in the car, and I could actually take it with me. All of them. So, um... Just something to think about for transportation or if you're building a room, which um, definitely is, <laughs> uh, I think we all got space I issue at, at this time. Um, I have eight cabinets and I actually have two of them in the box still. I haven't even taken them out of the box because I don't, it's not that I don't know where to put them. It's just that the house is getting filled up with cabs like everybody else's. So anyways, um, I mean, you can see I'm spinning this around like nobody's business. It's not really a big deal. But um, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and as far as, uh, yeah, maybe making the riser, I just make it 16, 16, 16 and a half here. 
literally took an old kit, an old arcade one up uh, the, the front panel because they come with the cabs. And I just traced this out, and this is just seven sixteenths um, MDF board at Home Depot. You can buy a four by eight sheet of it. They can cut it in generally small squares for you, twenty by twenty inch squares, right on their saw, so you can bring it home in your car. And then I basically just uh, trace the dimensions on a table saw, cut them, rip them. And then I just grooved out where this channel goes and, and put uh, some blue T molding on it. And there you go. And then you just tell, uh, you know, uh, Tyler at Arcade one up or Arcade, um, I'm sorry, Arcade Graphics that you want uh, this particular decal of whatever. Um, and you want it 17 inches high by 21 inches wide or whatever it is. And then you just kind of match it, stick it on. Um, so I hope you like this video. Um, I got some more to come, some more concepts, some other games. Um, I made a hell of a Nintendo cab, uh, regular old school Nintendo cab with a pie in it. And uh, I'm playing the crap out of that because I know Nintendo is never going to come out with a cab. So um, <laughs> anyways, uh, hopefully really... Uh, Really throwing this out into thin air, really getting my uh, kind of ho hoping that maybe somebody at um, Arcade One Up sees this, sees that they have these games. They don't have to actually buy any of them. They've already owned them. They have already done this concept of cabinet. Could they possibly just switch the board and make this a four player gauntlet cabinet with what they had? Even if they use the four player that they style manufacture that they've already done, I think it could be a quick buck flip for them if enough people wanted it. And I, I feel like a lot of old school people still wanted the old school gauntlet cabinet. And they I guess they just felt like gauntlet wasn't the stronger game that Rampage was. Rampage is a great game. I mean, it's, a, it's great. Um, but I don't know. The gauntlet four player was like the game that I actually wanted this for. And now that when I can throw axes in this thing, uh, I mean, this thing cranks. Faker, one hundred point. So you can kind of see that I'm playing both. Uh, hard to play with two hands, but you get the concept. Stay in the keys to open doors. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please, uh, I want to hear from all you guys. And a quick shout out to Twisted, Retro Ralph, um, One Up Weekly, Justin, P Dubs. Detroit Love, and countless others that uh, thanks for being around for all that you've done uh, through the COVID because believe it or not, just doing these concepts, getting into these hobbies has, has really kind of saved from um, complete boredom, frustration, and just making you feel like you had time to get into this stuff. Um, do owe a ton of gratitude to people that were getting into it and they've actually stimulated stimulated me to get into all this stuff if it wasn't for any of you guys to some degree i would never be doing this i wouldn't even actually probably know this existed um so thank you for posting all you post i watch all your stuff all the time um love it all even people who've done mods uh no mod to me is a bad mod it means that your mind's thinking you're creative and uh and you're doing your thing so um, really appreciate it. Sorry this video was long because there was so much to go over, but it was also an, uh, a way to finally introduce myself. Um, and maybe you, every time you see 8 big 8 bit vinyl, like uh, doing some concepts and stuff or replying to your chats, you have a face to put with it. And uh, um, I just appreciate that. And thanks again, guys. God bless. Keep up the mods. Keep on gaming.